Okay, I'd like to apologize for doing this video earlier. Um, I was actually sick, so I, if, if I was to do it any earlier, you probably wouldn't have been able to understand me at all. I've still got a problem with phlegm, though, and I'm getting headaches, so I'll try to make it quick. Um, the question is, what if wrestling was never declared entertainment? That's episode four, by the way. Um, well, I'll start with this man because he was basically the person who declared entertainment or sports entertainment. And the reason why he did this was because he didn't want to um, run it like a, a sporting organization. Because if you were, if he was to run it like a sporting organization, he would have had to pay more fees. Um, or it would have cost him more, and it would have been hard for him to to really get more control over it. Um, if you if the WWF remained a sporting organization as recognized by the the law or um an athletics a sanctioning body he really wouldn't have been able to do as much as he could um in terms of with talent he would have been able to he would have he would have had to pay some of his talent more some of it some of his talent would have um been paid less there always would have been drug testing not just you know when he wants to cover his ass and he would have had to pay more fees for like wrestling renting buildings and and stuff like that um and and one of the reasons why he did another reason why he declared it entertainment was because um basically because he, he everyone was going oh it was at a time where everyone was catching all well, everyone sort of knew it was fake but everyone was like really trying to expose it for being fake and, and, and the like crap so he just said well it's entertainment not sport and and doing that you know he sort of just was able was given gave himself the power to do whatever he wanted like he could do as do make it as cartoonish as he liked and people would you know anyone who said it was fake would look like an idiot because he'd say yeah of course it's fake it's it's, it's entertainment not sport and you know people were still fucking making dicks of themselves by saying hey that's fake anyway that was that was basically the reasons why he did that anyway if he'd never declared it entertainment it really what what would have happened was the government would have more control over it. They, he will forget about the fees and and, and building and, and all that crap. But if you think about it, he would have lost. Uh, you know, he w he probably would have lost a lot of money. But you know, let's just say it stayed in business, and, and we'll just ignore the money thing because it really doesn't make any difference. If he had if it remained a sporting organization pretty much the whole wrestling industry would remain a sporting organization or would be seen as a sporting organization because when he did that he took all your know, athletic commissions and, and and all that crap sort of just went just looked at all pro wrestling and just went yeah we don't really need to regulate this it's just uh, like uh, they just didn't acknowledge it was a sport because it it in some ways it is, some ways it isn't, but they just said, well, it's easier on us if we didn't recognise it. I mean, in some states they still do follow uh, athletic um, laws and stuff because some organisations could consider themselves a sport. But, you know, that the power that the government now ha has on pro wrestling is very negligible. Like, um, small things like CZW can't use like uh, light tubes on some of the indoor arenas or um, in some states or in, in Pennsylvania or um, you yeah, know places like that but yeah that's really the extent of their power before that and during the 80s <coughs> during the 80s it was more like to become a wrestler, you needed to get a license for it. You needed to, you know, go undergo a, a series of medical exams. Like um, in Texas, you would have to, be, you had to be 19 to to start training to be a wrestler. You know, and now I think there are like some schools which will teach you at you know 14 years old to be a professional wrestler. So really, that way, it means you can start. You know, it may be more hazardous for the people who are training if they're younger but it also means they can get talent while they're younger and, and you know and all that sort of stuff you know by the time they're 18 or whatever they can you know be wrestling full time and it, it was the same thing in Canada like it was also it used to be regulated but when Vince declared it entertainment really they just sort of after over a certain amount of time they just ignored it and, and didn't acknowledge it was a sporting organisation so then you know all of a sudden you had this big change 
but if it was still a supporting organisation, what would have happened was um, the government would have had more control over Vince, right? And because they had the more control, the biggest impact it would have it would be in the steroid, you know, scandals, because they would be able to subject him, you know, they would just be able to say you have to do this, and they wouldn't have to go through all this government inquiries and stuff. They might have even put him out of business because of the steroid scandal and, and all these drug things. And the policy that he's put in now, it wouldn't be a, you know, a cover-my-ass policy, because that's basically what it is anyway. Because, I mean, look, Randy Orton gets busted taking, you know, all sorts of crap, and, you know, he just gets, what, suspended for like a month without pay or has to wrestle or whatever, and then, you know, someone else gets caught with, you know, in similar circumstances taking drugs and shit and then get suspended for you know or fired for a long period of time and you know Triple H doesn't have to do those tests as, as Scott Steiner said because they wanted to test him for steroids and he said we'll test Triple H and they didn't want to do that but I mean that might just be Scott Steiner being in that case that he is but you know I'd like to believe him anyway with the, the whole steroid thing what would have happened was it would because you had and this, and this is a pretty big jump, because you would have the government saying, you have to do these tests, and if they do these tests, you've got to pretty much answer to us. If that was the case, Vince wouldn't be hiring these big guys that he does. He wouldn't be... Because these tests man, these tests would be on everyone, and everyone would be expected to be punished exactly the same, with, you know, a, a long-term suspension or firing. So what would have happened was, because you, you weren't allowed to have guys who were on drugs or whatever... You would have seen a lot of the the bigger guys in pro wrestling, especially during the the, the 90s. They would have, I mean, the the physically more muscular guys. You would you wouldn't have seen as many of them. You would have seen a lot more smaller guys, because without steroids, the a lot of the big guys aren't very reliable at all. I mean, the reason why a lot of them take steroids is because of medical reasons. But he, and you know, Vince always says, well, if you've got a medical reason, you can take these, but under the under an athletic commission uh, upheld, or you know, if the government had the control, they say, "Well, it doesn't matter if you if you're you've got an injury, you, you just can't take this," or something like that, because or you know something along those lines. So you would have seen a lot more smaller wrestlers coming in, and you would have seen, and because you had smaller wrestlers, you would have seen a more athletic type of style, rather than you know in, in a the average guy would, wouldn't be, you know, six foot two, or the ideal height wouldn't be, you know, six foot in the WWE, or you had to be over that. It would have been smaller, and, and they wouldn't be, you know, targeting, um, well, they wouldn't be trying to get these really big guys that they usually do, because, you know, if they did, they would, it would be likely that, you know, when they test them, they'd be found to be on steroids and, and stuff like that, and that would be bad for the WWF or WWE, because... If, uh, they'd have to answer to the government. So, basically... <coughs> sorry. If, Vin if Vince never declared it um, uh, entertainment, it would have been quite literally more of a sports type, uh, more, more of an athletic line of work. Because... You, and, I mean, it wouldn't look like it because the wrestlers would be as, you know, jacked as, as they are. But, I mean, just look at fucking Vince and tell me he's not on steroids. The, the, stero the steroid policy he has is really just to cover his ass. Um, but, you know, if if Vince never declared um, sp uh, entertainment, the, the government would... There wouldn't be all these steroid scandals, drug problems, all that, because the government would just come in and and uh, regulate it. And it would be the same thing with pretty much any profession. TNA wouldn't be able to get away with, you know, letting the guys... or They wouldn't be hiring guys that have been known to be on drugs and, and all that kind of thing. And It really would have radically changed wrestling because a lot of the guys that, that you have wouldn't even be in the business. I mean, it, it, Hulk Hogan would have been, like, gone in the 90s, perhaps. But Or he would have had uh, the government... You know, revoke his uh, wrestling license in in you know some states because at that time they still if if it was still seen as a uh, sport he would have had to have a license. Anyway, um, I would have liked to have talked about this more, but you know, I, this base just I just covered the basics there. So um, 
it would have taken a lot for me to go over it all. Anyway, uh, my next video will probably be done tomorrow, and it'll be what if ECW never went under. Thanks for watching. Bye.